already trying a new camera setup tonight, so hopefully this works. I hope it's not too dark. <sighs> anyway, one of, the, one of the worst things that we have to deal with, one of the most pernicious problems in prison ministry is searching through the Bible for clues to when Judgment Day is going to be. Armageddon. Um, as you may have heard if you've been reading the news lately, there are now snakes that are having virgin births. And this isn't an entirely new thing. This is not the first time that animals have, have reproduced that way, but it's surprising to many people, confusing to some, alarming to some, because they're looking for these dates and times. You know, when is Jesus coming back? Well, it is interesting to me as well, but particularly for prisoners, this can be problematic. And we spend a lot of time, sometimes every week it feels like, fighting against these kind of quick fix scenarios where the, you know, somebody who's in prison wants to know when is Jesus coming back and what toys is he bringing with him? Because prisoners are in a weird position. They, they're in an incredibly lonely, dangerous, upsetting, um, and judgmental environment where they feel very vulnerable. They feel lonely. They feel threatened physically and otherwise. They feel very judged and condemned and forgotten about by society at large. And they also are incredibly bored, which is really the clincher. So these inmates have a lot of time to sit there and read the Bible and to watch the crazy church services on whatever channel the common room TV is turned to and to come up with these theories about when is Jesus coming back. And this is a tough issue. It's one that I have a lot of sympathy for them because I've never been incarcerated and it's still something I think any serious Christian wonders about. Well, is it going to happen during my earthly lifetime? So we just have to always remind ourselves and remind each other and especially the most vulnerable among us who are the incarcerated inmates trying to get right with God that ultimately it doesn't matter when Judgment Day happens. It doesn't matter if it's tomorrow at 4 p.m. It doesn't matter if it's in a billion years. What matters is it's coming. And so we have to do what is a lot harder than looking up for signs and symbols. We have to do this interior warfare, right? Synergistic salvation. We have to try to actually do or do not. There is no try, right? We have to get right with God. We have to stop sinning. We have to start praying. We have to start loving even the people who are terrible to us. All of those things, which for most of us in the beginning, and maybe even for all of us in the beginning, are not very fun at all. And there's very little exterior evidence for a lot of this work that has to go on. So uh, St. Mary of Egypt. Look at St. Mary of Egypt. I love bringing her up, when, especially when I'm dealing with women, because when she went across the River Jordan and dwelt in the desert, what was it? She was tortured with her passions for 17 years? 14, 17? Google it. Incredible spiritual warfare that went on here. And we are really called to pretty much the same thing, not necessarily out in the desert, but in the desert of the soul, you know, the barren desert of a soul that doesn't have the, the, the living water in it yet. So, um... I'm going to be following these news stories with interest. Sure, it's fascinating. There's nothing wrong with being interested in it, as long as we don't get too interested. You know, we don't want to make Judgment Day itself an idol. Isn't that weird how stuff like the second coming of Christ could actually become an idol in your life? So I, I just thought that that was interesting. Really, really, really interesting. Um, I suppose I'm thinking about it particularly because I just got an email from my husband saying that there's been some really shifty stuff going on in the Federal Reserve lately. I mean, the Federal Reserve is always shifty, but he is actually now suggesting that we buy gold and silver bullion rather than put a lot of money in the bank. And my husband doesn't say things like that off the hip, you know, from the hip. He's not a dramatic person. He is not one that's just prone to these knee-jerk reactions. So I suppose that also has me thinking about this a little bit. What, what are we going to do? You know, if the economy collapses, Christianity is quickly becoming illegal in America, and it's illegal in a lot of the rest of the world already. So this battle is only going to get more intense. And so I've been thinking about that a lot, I've been praying about it a lot, 
I was talking to my friend that goes into the prison with me and he was saying, you know what, if it comes down to it, I'm going to the catacombs in Jerusalem. You know, if that's where it's going down, that's where I'm going to go. So I'm not doing any of that yet. That's just a reflection. So, um, sometimes it's easy to get too caught up in the externals. So, first snakes are having virgin birth. Very interesting. Anyway, the train's coming. I gotta go. So, God be with you. Talk to you later.